Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today I will recap for you a drama, horror, thriller film from 2019 titled One Bedroom. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. In Los Angeles, California, aspiring costume designer, Sarah, is searching for a one-bedroom apartment to lease. She parks her somewhat rusted blue car, and walks into the Asilo Del Mar living complex, after seeing a sign advertising an open house. Sarah enters the building and discovers a tranquil, pleasant community, there are families with young children, and a security system, and after noticing an older lady struggling to keep her balance and preventing her from falling, the friendly woman introduces herself as Edie. Upstairs, Sarah turns the corner into the second floor apartment to take a tour of the available unit. Unfortunately, the unit is filled with people who arrived before her, prompting Sarah to turn around and prepare to leave. The building manager, Jerry, tells her it can't hurt to take a look, so she follows his recommendation and looks around the apartment, finding it well maintained aside from two random imprints in the wall that have been sloppily caulked and painted over. Recalling a comment she heard earlier about the building being smoke and pet free, Sarah lies on the application when asked if she has any animals. The sheer number of applicants alone makes it unlikely that Sarah will get the apartment. She returns to her dimly lit room in a rundown motel and gets on her laptop to continue her housing search. A random call from her father interrupts the search and he asks when she is coming home. Sarah, who has barely spoken to her father since learning he cheated on her terminally ill mother, defiantly informs him that she is staying in LA. Not only has she enrolled in the upcoming semester of school, but she has also landed a new job. What Sarah refrained from mentioning is that she is not designing costumes. Instead, Sarah sits behind a desk doing mundane clerical work as a temporary employee in an attorney's office. Although the admins are often mistreated, Sarah's co-worker, Lisa, stands up to one of the attorneys after she tried to make Lisa a scapegoat, then confronts Sarah for eavesdropping on the conversation. Flustered, Sarah apologizes and turns back around, however, Lisa laughs saying that she was only teasing and after introducing herself promises to introduce Sarah to everyone in the office. To her surprise, Sarah is awarded the lease on the apartment. While moving in, she uses a blue blanket to conceal her cat and carries the crate up to the second floor, where she is stopped by an attractive man around her same age who introduces himself as Brian. Brian, her next door neighbor, offers to help Sarah move in, but she worries about her pet ownership being exposed and cuts the conversation short, though she accepts his invitation to join the community barbecue later that evening. That night, Sarah makes good on her word and attends the neighborhood gathering. There, she is introduced to many of the building's residents, Oliver, an attorney, and his physician wife, Esther, Jerry's better half, Janice, and of course, Brian, whom Sarah has already taken a liking to. She is also approached by Lester, the one-eyed resident from the opposite side of the courtyard, who Sarah has already caught staring at her from a distance. He tries to give Sarah a book that was written about community, but she politely declines to accept it. As Sarah begins to get settled in, she starts noticing some strange occurrences. She hears banging sounds so loud they prevent her from sleeping at night, and vulgar warnings are slipped underneath her door warning that pets are strictly forbidden. Some days later, Brian invites Sarah to a dinner party at his house and she agrees after some hesitation, but her sleep deprivation catches up to her and she completely forgets about the commitment, instead picking up takeout food with her co-worker Lisa. That night, Sarah's sleep is again interrupted, this time by the loud siren of her smoke detector. To her dismay, Another policy notice sits atop Sarah's stove, and her cat has been killed in a horrific fashion. Sarah barely has a moment to process what happened before Brian surprises her from behind, forces her into a chair, and binds Sarah's wrists behind her body. Brian, who appears completely emotionless throughout the process, then places a briefcase on the table, removes a syringe, and prepares to inject Sarah with an unknown solution. Meanwhile, Sarah manages to break herself free by rocking back and forth in the chair until it tips over. She kicks Brian away and runs out the door, seeking security with Esther on the balcony outside. Despite begging for help, Sarah gets little response from her neighbor, but it's not until Brian reassures Esther that everything is okay that Sarah realizes the entire community has been collaborating. Together, Brian and Esther subdue Sarah and drag her back to her apartment, where they are joined by Jerry amongst other residents of the building, and Sarah is rendered unconscious. Sarah wakes up in a disoriented state, wearing medical scrubs on the floor of an empty room. She looks around and discovers the windows have been covered with boards, the door is reinforced with metal, and two glowing red buttons have been attached to a panel on the wall. Soon after, Brian and Jerry re-enter the room and tell Sarah she must learn to cooperate. 
she is forced to bend at the waist and extend her hands out to the wall, in what the two men refer to as the stress position. She will be monitored 24 hours a day by an overhead surveillance camera and must maintain that position any time the red lights are illuminated. After a few minutes it will become uncomfortable, but over hours, it is excruciating. Lester enters the room and displays firsthand the consequences of non-compliance. His right ear was mangled on account of his disobedience, and his eye was removed for attempting to escape. Days go on with Sarah spending most of her time in the stress position, pausing only to sip the plain nutritional shake that has slid under her door like an animal in a zoo. As she becomes increasingly exhausted, Sarah is visited by Edie, who has come to provide Sarah with some supportive company. Sarah is shocked to learn that Edie also endured this same process, and she tells Edie the entire thing is crazy. Edie, however, completely buys into Jerry's methods of fixing bad conditions, and she reveals that everyone in the building started exactly the same way as Sarah. Crazy is hiding an animal where it doesn't belong, with no regard for your neighbors. Crazy is poisoning yourself with alcohol and pills, to forget your loneliness. Crazy is throwing away the only family you have left, in pursuit of a selfish fantasy. It's not crazy, Edie explains, it is science, and fighting it will only make it worse. Several cycles of the stress position later, Sarah's resolve is finally broken. After collapsing to the floor, she begs Jerry to make it end, at which point he brandishes a gun and offers to oblige her. Under the threat of certain and immediate death, Sarah drags herself back into position against the wall. Brian, who agrees that she can no longer continue, offers his nefarious assistance comprised of metal nails being driven into the wall through Sarah's hands. Sarah digs deep searching for the strength to continue but can feel her resolve beginning to wane. Before her will can be completely broken, Sarah is empowered by an auditory hallucination of her father's voice at a point in her childhood. Using his voice as motivation, she yanks her hands from the bloody wall before collapsing to the floor unconscious. Later, Sarah sits in the corner of the room in a trance-like state, calmly waiting for the light to turn back on. She finally reaches the point where she just goes through the motions subconsciously, at which point Brian and Jerry re-enter the room and stop her. To Sarah's surprise, Brian approaches and gives her a congratulatory hug while welcoming her into the community with a job well done. In the coming days, Sarah begins to learn what being a part of the community truly means. Esther and Edie assist Sarah with her wounded hands, she is handed a fresh set of clothing that she can change into, and she walks outside to bask in the sun. And because openness is one of their fundamental tenets, Sarah is hooked up to a lie detector and besieged with probing questions about things like her sexual preference and a strange relationship with her father. Over time, Sarah begins to warm up to the community, she spends time talking and learning from Jerry, and she devotes time to the recommended reading. Yet despite her newfound appreciation, and perhaps even an honest want too, Sarah still doesn't have the desire to become a permanent resident. Janice takes Sarah to the building's on-site children's classroom to learn the fundamental tenets they abide by. There, the students are introduced to Dr. Charles Ellerby, the author of the books Sarah has been studying. Dr. Ellerby's teachings are based upon four fundamental concepts. First, and most importantly, selflessness. You always act in the best interest of the community. Second, openness. Discord is bred in secrets. Third, acceptance. Once an error has been corrected, it is already forgiven. And finally, security. We are our best selves when we know our neighbors are watching. According to Ellerby, over time, the foundations become a habit, before ultimately becoming who you are. When that happens, the world becomes a perfect community, completely free of strife. That night, Sarah is taken to the building surveillance center, which has multiple cameras displaying every residence unit. Sarah asks Brian who then is monitoring the camera fixed on the surveillance room, to which he nervously replies that it's none of their business. Some more time passes, and Sarah answers honestly that she would like to be part of the community, though even she is still uncertain that she truly believes it. A small brand behind her right ear establishes Sarah as an invariable resident, joining Asilo Del Mar as a permanent fixture. As such, Sarah is then bequeathed to Lester where she will replace Lester's previous wife who was recently lost to cancer, and ultimately become the mother of his children. Lester shows Sarah to the apartment they will now share, where he plans to consummate their new relationship. It is at that point that Jerry bursts in to interrupt their tryst because Sarah's father has arrived at the building to look for her. One of the available units is staged to appear like Sarah's apartment to avoid any suspicion from her father. Then, while Brian observes from the nearby room, Sarah tries to convince her father to leave. Sarah begins the conversation by delivering a compelling message which is almost enough to persuade her father to return home but he issues one last-ditch apology that brings Sarah to tears, and she can't help but accept her father's embrace. At that point, 
Brian emerges from the room with a butcher knife in hand and approaches Sarah's father from behind. Realizing that she must dispatch of her father immediately or else he will be murdered right there on the spot, Sarah resorts to chastising him for cheating on her dying mother, which he responds to by slapping her in the face before walking out. Afterward, Sarah returns to Lester's apartment expecting to finish what they had previously started, however, instead of the bed he leads her into the adjacent room bearing a sewing machine for Sarah to utilize when designing costumes. Lester shares that his first several years at the community were spent obsessing about either escaping the property or committing the unthinkable. It was only after he met his late wife that he believed happiness was still achievable, and Sarah takes Lester's hand into hers to comfort him. Sarah's unit is restored to its original state and made available again to the open market. To Sarah's dismay, it is her former co-worker Lisa who is selected to become the next member of the community. Sarah thinks back to Lisa's interactions at the office and warns that she will not be easily broken. Several days into the process, Brian wishes he would have heeded Sarah's cautions after a determined Lisa gets close enough to bite a piece of his ear off. Sarah enters the room and delivers an unrehearsed speech touting the many benefits of adopting the community's tenants. She begins by saying the community is solely responsible for her salvation, providing the caring family that she has long sought after. Sarah, however, changes her tone midway through the conversation, projecting her own experience onto Lisa by saying that there is only so much pain a person can endure. The rhetoric does little to sway Lisa's opinion and she proceeds to call Sarah brainwashed, declaring that underneath her facade of feigned happiness Sarah appears to be truly terrified, despite trying to convince herself otherwise. Lisa kicks Sarah to the floor and runs to escape, forcing Jerry to intervene at the front door. Having failed to change Lisa's way of thinking, Sarah gets up to her feet and prepares to vacate the room. Jerry stops her in place and to Sarah's surprise, demands that she finish what she started. He hands Sarah a screwdriver to be placed in Lisa's ear, but when he raises the hammer and prepares to drive the tool into Lisa's skull, Sarah plunges the screwdriver into Jerry's neck. She then grabs the nearby hammer and runs out of the room with Lisa, only for Jerry to suddenly re-emerge and kill Lisa with a gunshot to the head. With her face splattered with blood, Sarah hurls the hammer at Jerry and takes vengeance for everything he has done to her by stabbing him repeatedly with the screwdriver. Then, Sarah removes the door remote from Jerry's pocket and takes the firearm from his hand, where she is shocked to see the same impalement scar on Jerry's palm and the community logo branded behind his right ear. After being confronted by the other residents in the courtyard, Sarah declares them free from Jerry's torturous reign. As it turns out, Jerry had been just one of Dr. Ellerby's many devoted followers, therefore the community will continue thriving without him. Sarah, who can hardly believe what she is hearing, shoots and kills Brian before taking off and running towards the front door. She is halfway outside when the other residents catch up to her there, and Lester claims the firearm from her hand. Without uttering a word, Lester kills the man restraining Sarah, holds the others back to allow Sarah to escape, then closes the door before turning the gun back towards himself. Sarah runs down the street with her face covered in blood and realizes she is free upon finally looking back. To her dismay, she notices the adjacent community adorned with surveillance cameras and a CDE logo, at which point up and down the street alarms begin sounding accompanied by a flashing red light to signal an escape. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel to see more.